Hey, Amanda. Hey, hey, Jeremy. <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining the latest in our Inside Innovation series. I think today we're going to try a slightly different format uh, because we have a lot more open Q&A dialogue we can have around all the new information coming out around Gen AI right. and AI technology that's been in the news since, since our last innovation showcase of, of 2023. I thought maybe it would make sense to start with a little bit of a reflection. We have a long, long history here at Bear about using artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to really advance agriculture. Right. Right. And we think that's a really key part of our, our systems-based approach. So, of course, we're very excited about, about generative AI and the possibilities it can unlock. But, but when you step back, I think the guiding principle for us continues to be how do we produce solutions that are easy to access, um, that people understand, and that inspire trust and confidence. So really, I think that's maybe a way to frame the dialogue we're about to get into. And I'm sure we've got lots of questions. So... Uh, let's see. The first one is from uh, Vidya Harishankar, you know, in Bangalore. It's our Bangalore team. And Vidya asks, what barriers exist for the adoption of AI in agriculture and how can they be overcome? Well, ag tech companies are all already seeing a strong adoption of AI tools um, because I think the industry recognizes that we need them to scale. But we've got some work to do in terms of telling our story to, to our growers and our farmers and really getting that true understanding um, and, and acceptance. And, and when I think about it, I think some of the things that we care about with respect to producing a good model output and allowing it to scale broadly also happens to be some of the things that farmers right. care about, um, which means we have some mutual interests. And the things underlying that are Understanding our data sources, that's a really important practice. Making sure we use high quality data, we use that data consistently, and that the data is of course interoperable, which means that we can digest it in multiple different ways, combine it and connect it in different ways. Yeah, so I know you're gonna get to data privacy at some point, but for sure, being able to trust the models, the model outputs is something that would be top of mind for farmers, for for any consumer of data, right? It's uh, it's like we want to know where our food comes from, how it's made. People also want to understand what data was used. Uh, was the data biased? Can I trust the recommendations? And for us, uh, you know, having trust be central to what we do is super important. Absolutely. Very, very important in any, any industry that touches, touches food, right? Um, which actually brings us to our next question. So what is it about trust and privacy as it relates to using AI tools for ag? What should farmers understand about how data is being used to output things that farmers consume? Yeah, so this is probably like with, like I was just saying with food, people want to understand, you know, where things come from and how they're made. Is the data, in the case of AI, is the data biased? Uh, can I have confidence that the recommendations are going to be things that are, you know, consistent with labels and requirements and, le and regulations and so on. And, you know, this is something that all experts working in the field put a lot of thought into, this, this issue of ensuring that uh, artificial intelligence does not, as we say, hallucinate or generate things that don't make any sense. Also, that it gives recommendations that are actually consistent with uh, – policy and legal requirements. This is something that's super important for us. And I could say with our data, uh, we obviously do a lot of testing to make sure that the models are ro robust long before they get to any farmers or any other customers. Yeah, and I think this relates, again, back to things that people read in the news, right? And, and some of the concern that's out there are that these big AI models that generate art, for example, mm. are being built through the exploitation of stolen work, right? Others, others product, um, you know, intellectual property. And, and also through low quality or inconsistent right. data that, that you mentioned. I think that's a justified concern because as, as you said, data sources are not always clear. So I think it's also important that we adhere to industry and government standards as it relates to integrity, right. data ownership, collaboration, but also as a big player in the industry that we continue to push for higher standards or clearer standards where they may not exist. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's important that we lead in this space. So let's talk about one of our things that's closer to home. You know, we recently had the 
uh, expert AI system that we announced a few months ago. I think it was March in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So what would you give people as sort of the elevator pitch for what this is? Ah, the elevator pitch, yes. The <laughs> things we all get coached to provide, right? Um, our, our ag expert Gen AI system is a system that uses text-based prompts um, to query, I'd say, the collective expertise inside Bear right. about agronomy, about our products, and about how to use them. And and it, it queries the... Um, the knowledge of our experts um, that, that are global in nature. It, it queries all these written artifacts that we've collected about those products over years. And it includes data from our yearly field trials right. where we're testing our products and, and we're learning more and gaining more insight. And what we can do with that capability is leverage it to increase the effectiveness of our agronomic and our product support teams, right? So those those frontline customer-facing sales teams, how do we make them more effective and really unlock that value for, for all of our customers? And I think that is particularly impactful, that sort of knowledge accessibility is particularly impactful for farmers in geographies where we know that is a barrier, like smallholder geographies, where this, this knowledge gap is hard to overcome. There are millions and millions of farmers, how do you get all of them connected and be able to answer all of the questions that might come up? Yeah, no, for me, it's really cool that this tool can enhance the effectiveness of experts, but it can also be very useful with non-experts, right? Being able to query and get agronomic advice in a natural language way. I mean, this is a really super exciting thing. So let's see. Uh, I think maybe you have other questions around this topic of how to use it with uh, maybe non-experts, right? Absolutely. That's that's the beauty of, of Gen AI, right? <laughs> um, another another question that's coming in from, from the Bayer team, from Ana Paulina Passos. Um, she asks, how can we leverage the livelihoods of smallholders worldwide if we lack data on them and they are dispersed across countries? Can AI help tackle the numerous challenges arising from climate change? So a lot to unpack. There's a lot there. A lot there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I would say absolutely uh, this can be very uh, beneficial to smallholders, even with the complexity of data being in different languages, data not always, always being standardized. But you can imagine taking our internal knowledge with all of the data that's in the public domain and then giving farmers a way to query the data in a, in a very simple way. So imagine a farmer wanting to get information in his or her native language. You can have the AI tool now translate for that native uh, language and make it more accessible. Or maybe someone who is not as comfortable reading. You can imagine having uh, text-to-speech conversion coupled with the AI tool. Now, again, making this insight more accessible to smallholders. I think the impact we can have in, in some of these geographies is really, in, in some ways, hard to even imagine. When you bring what could be relatively simple agronomic advice but make it more available uh, to customers in Southeast Asia and Africa, parts of uh, uh, South America, really could be transformational. I, I think you're absolutely right. And and I think your point, or, or Anna's point, about the lack of data mm. on smallholders in diverse countries does continue to be a challenge. But one of the really cool things about Gen AI is that it can also look across a lot of disparate types of data, right. data sources. So that language piece that you talked about, um, obviously numerical or tabular data, right. and also images. So that allows the, you know, sometimes when we have limited data, it allows that data to go further because we can combine those, those different sources. Um, and, and we can also start to extract insights from broader data sets from other geographies, um, identifying maybe shared regional agronomic conditions um, that we can bring back to, to a place like smallholders as well. No, pretty, pretty exciting. So I think our next question is uh, maybe a little bit more technical. Uh, Neil Havermail says, uh, what do AI technology suggest for the future of climate smart farming system. So uh, no pressure, Amanda. What, what, how would you answer this question? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the day when AI can answer all my questions. Um, I, you know, I think maybe it's important to frame it first, right? Our key goal is to help farmers incre increase their farm outputs with fewer inputs. Right. Um, we, we do this when it, with an integrated approach. We think about seed selection. We think about agronomic management and, of course, uh, crop protection applications to take care of the crop throughout the growing season. 
I think, though, what we've been building towards in this brief conversation is the concept of AI as a tool rather than AI as true intelligence, Um, which means that for the purposes of suggesting the future, we still need people. Um, And and those AI system answers really are going to deeply depend on the data that's fed to them. Um, And the possible routes to explore in the future um, really depend on, um, you know, the the, the choices we make, right, and 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 what different types of of experiments and and sort of test and learn that that we want to explore. Um, so for now, at least, I think human hands have to continue to help shape um, and retain that unique license to creativity um, and intuition, and of course, our true logic. Yeah, and 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 this point I think is sometimes missed, but the ability of AI to enhance what we do as humans. I mean, for me, this is really exciting, allowing us to extract more insights, like you said, from disparate data uh, to automate tasks that for us, frankly, are boring and we're actually not very good at, but then allow us to bring more creativity, which allows us to then drive more productivity and more sustainability from agriculture. So, I mean, I think this is pretty exciting. Yeah, that's right. Knowledge extraction and content creation, right? I, I'll <laughs> take right. all the help I can get in those areas. <laughs> all right, we have, we have one final question to wrap up. Um, I'll start with the example of Apple and OpenAI's partnership to integrate OpenAI tools into the Apple iOS devices. To unlock the power of AI across ag, what partnerships and barriers need to be addressed from your perspective? Yeah, so one of the things we know is that there is a real issue with data uh, compatibility. Uh, So being able to, to... uh, standardized data, be able to access it in, in, a, in a more low friction way, uh, and then be able to integrate it so you can more easily run analyses and generate insights. Uh, this is, is a major opportunity in agriculture. Uh, and, and frankly, this is one of the things that I'm most excited about with uh, artificial intelligence is the ability to maybe relax some of the stringent requirements for how the data needs to be integrated in in order to get the most useful insights out of it. Well, and it's also one of the things that we're hoping to address with our partnership with Microsoft, Mm -hmm. right, on our Azure Data Manager for Agriculture platform, where enterprises um, across the industry are feeding critical data into a central place, and that platform helps ensure that that data is usable and interoperable, right, to our earlier points. Yeah, well, um, I think... We're probably about here to the end. Um, th- yeah, obviously, it went the, quickly. <laughs> it did. It's and, and 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 of course, exchange is sort of just a drop in the bucket yeah. on the topic. Uh, the space is evolving really rapidly. For sure, I'm sure by next month there there all, will already be be more to talk about and explore. But hopefully, this gives the audience a little bit of a glimpse into how we think about AI for ag. And and thank you for watching. If you haven't caught up on our previous episodes, be sure to catch the series on our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us.